on esteem and friendship. As I told you in one of my previous letters, the recollections of the days I spent in Paris in the eventful year of 1848 will be for me, for many a year to come, a source of very deep delight. Would to heaven that the hopes that then shone so brightly above our hearts were still visible in our changeful and mournful skies, were still the objects of the people's love, faith, and adoration. But they have disappeared. Clouds on clouds have thickened round them, and in the darkness which covers the land we hear but the wail of the dying and the supplications of the penniless and the breadless. Never. Never has their country been so utterly downcast, so debased, so pitiful, so spiritless. Yet I do not, could not despair at her regeneration. Nations do not die in a day. Their lives are reckoned by generations and they encompass centuries. Their vitality is inextinguishable. Their sufferings are sometimes terrible. But they have survived the deadliest plagues, the red inundation of the battlefields, the storms which topples towers and pyramids, the fire in which millions of wealth is melted down, the earthquakes which engulf cities and buries a whole people in one indistinguishable sepulchre. They have been known to survive all. Greece has so 